that's definitely a problem. That only happens when this doesn't have water in it and runs consistently like that. And what ends up happening and what did happen in this area, you can see it by the staining right here, is the threads on this and the threads on that melted and popped right out. Now when this pump attempts to run, water spews out of it everywhere. The solution here is to dig up the intake line. We're actually gonna replace the check valve, replace that piece of pipe, that fitting, and the male adapter there. Timothy's using the two tarp process here because we have rocks involved and we wanted to keep those separate from the dirt that we have to dig. So the rocks are sitting underneath this tarp. And if he gets into enough dirt and he needs to roll it over onto this one, it won't be a problem because the top of this tarp is protecting those rocks. They're right under here. We're gonna cut right about where I just made that mark there, or actually as far in as we can, because then we're gonna come right back out with a new piece of pipe and an elbow. All right, now he just threw the piece of pipe into here. What I want you to do, Timothy, is rebuild it. rebuild it kind of according to this. You would grab the pipe, and I know Timothy already knows this, but I'm gonna explain it to all you guys watching the video. He's gonna grab the pipe, he's gonna place it right about here to see where he would need to cut it for the new pipe, which is gonna be roughly right about there. He'll give this pipe a cut at about this spot right here, and then he's gonna come over and grab a brand new elbow, and he's gonna glue the elbow to that piece of pipe first. And then he's gonna glue the coupling to that little piece of pipe first. And then he'll go install this whole thing in the hole down there. But he's gonna make a couple of checks before he does it to make sure that piece of pipe that he cut wasn't too long because we do have a one inch pipe traveling right across here that does interfere with how long we can bring this pipe out. All right, so Timothy and I made a little bit of a mistake. I was sitting there holding the pipe with him and we were holding it at an angle. Look what ended up happening. We cut the pipe at an angle. You can see it down there too. The way we're going to make sure we don't screw that up again is watch out, Timothy. We're going to use our cart as a bench and then we're going to use the sawzall to cut it again. He'll measure it back out. I'll hold it on this end over here and then Timothy can make a nice straight cut. And look at that. See what happens when you do things the right way? We were just not thinking. I could have easily not showed that in the video and just skipped over and said, hey, Timothy, cut a straighter piece before we turn the camera back on. But no, we gotta learn from our mistakes. That was a mistake. We learned from it. Now we're not doing that. All right, we're gonna proceed here with putting all the pieces together that I just talked about. I noticed Timothy was having a little bit of trouble with the primer right there. And, and I noticed what his problem was. And I'm gonna explain something to all you guys too. When you're pulling the primer out, everybody shakes the little dauber inside the can. And yes, that does get off some of the excess in the primer, but what you could be doing after that is giving it one good shake over the dirt. So you get that last little bit of extra primer off of there. And that's the little bit of primer that you that I just talked about shaking off. That would be the problem primer that's causing all of those things. He just went ahead and did a shake right there. I know it was right off camera because I moved the camera, but uh, did. it's all good. But he just did it right there. Now, when it comes to putting the primer on that pipe down there, uh, Timothy, you can put some more primer on there. Maybe not do the shake because you're going to need a little bit more down there because it's that, that pipe is dirty. There we go. We want to keep cleaning it some more until we, we see as little of that dirt on there as possible. We want to make a really good clean connection there. One tip I'll give you there that I didn't give you before you did that is you can place a piece of pipe in that 90 so you can visually see that it's straight up. You can even grab a, a level to make sure that it's exactly straight up. A lot of us do this by eye, including myself. That looks good to me. We could always adjust a little bit if we needed to. All right, we'll move on to putting in the vertical piece of pipe and then the check valve, which I didn't bring over here. Let me go grab it. Timothy used the same method of measurement on the old piece for the uh, pipe going up and it's just a general measurement so that we make it look the same way as we found it. Uh, one fun thing about check valves is how they look. If you look at this check valve very closely, you'll see that it's in the shape of an arrow pointing to my right, but you can see the coning on the check valve and that tells you which direction the water is flowing. The, the spot that he's putting on now is where the water is coming from, which is what he's gonna be putting that little piece of pipe into. This is exactly what he should be doing. He place the primer on first on both the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting and now he just put the solvent glue on there on both sides and he's going to do a quarter turn if you want to spread the solvents across all surfaces so when you make that half a turn or quarter turn that's what it's doing all right now that he's got this put together we can go ahead and install it into that uh, elbow there and then we're going to start uh, measuring the next piece of pipe which will actually involve us installing the male adapter first with a piece of pipe so that we can kind of measure the up pipe with the pipe coming out of the male adapter. And then we can make our final cuts. And the last fitting we'll be putting in will be the 90 
and we're gonna make that real easy because we do have to rebuild this discharge. So we are gonna cut the discharge on the pump, which means the pump will be free to move up and down, and then it'll make it easy for you to do what you need to do. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and finish rebuilding this intake. All right, I went to go talk to the homeowner for a few minutes and he already put together the intake and now he's working on the last connection here. Before you go and do that, did you double check to make sure all the measurements are gonna check, work out right? Everything. I'm sorry, I'm questioning you. I just wanna make sure. <laughs> for those of you watching, make sure you check your measurements before you go and glue things in, or even put the primer on because if you go to try to dry fit it with primer on there, you're not really dry fitting it and it can get stuck and cause problems. So don't do that. While we wait for the solvents to cure, we're gonna go ahead and backfill this little hole here. One of the benefits of using a tarp like this is when he gets the majority of the dirt into the hole, all he's gonna have to do is pull that tarp into the hole or pull it over the hole and let everything dump right in and we'll have a nice clean job site when we're finished. I did notice something while Timothy was backfilling this. Actually, I noticed it much earlier than that, but I saw that the electrical connection on the pump is actually not right. The liquid tight popped out of the connector here and all Timothy needs to do to fix this is loosen the connector nut all the way and then slide it over the uh, the conduit and now you're going to stick that in there so it goes underneath all of those teeth beautiful and then put that uh, connector nut right back up in there tighten it up and now we have a watertight connection on that electrical connection that was a hazard before but a two minute repair now we're good well, i've been asked this question before i'll answer it what does a guzzler do essentially it's a manual vacuum every time he pulls on that handle it's pulling the water up from the well Every time he pushes the handle down, it's pushing out air so that as we pull the water up, we're evacuating the air from the line is actually what we're doing. And while we evacuate the air from the line, what ends up happening is the water ends up getting pulled up to the head of the pump. We're looking for water to come out of that tool before we go and turn on the pump, which means the pump will be primed and ready to go. We'll let it run. It'll probably drop prime a couple of times in that process. But eventually it'll catch full prime and the pump station will be ready to go. We've got a real dirty well. All right, we'll go ahead and let that flush out before we send it to the system. There we go. Beautiful. Again, we'll let that flush out completely and then we'll end up opening up the ball valve to let the water go out to the system. That water looks very clean. Open up the ball valve. You can go ahead and close that. Well, it's just our luck that the zone on this side of the house that we're working on would be the one that would come on beautiful all right we're gonna we're gonna trick the system go ahead and close that ball valve for a second close it and count to like three one two three open it all right we just forced the indexing valve to change zones the controller's on the inside of the the building and we don't want to have to deal with walking in and out all right so here we go we got the front zone on next a little bit of the swale over here awesome 